Ira D. Sankey, how many of you have heard of Ira D. Sankey? Not many. So this is blazing new material for you. Blazing? Blazing? Got it. <laughs> uh, he was born in August 28, 1840 in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Not really my stopping grounds, but my state, at least. Um, 1870, he meets evangelist Dwight Moody in Indiana, and it is a, a fruitful meeting because Moody is one of the great evangelists of the time. He's one of the great preachers of the time. Uh, he started the Moody Bible Institute, which still exists today. He wrote a long uh, evangelical commentary on the Bible, Moody's commentary on the Bible. So he, he, he was one of the great speakers of his day, of the, the 19th century. Ira Sankey was one of the great hymn writers and uh, hymn singers of his day. So when the two kind of got together, uh, it kind of suggested, wow, we could go out on the road together. I could do the preaching and you could do the singing. And that's exactly what happened for a number of years. 1871, uh, Moody and Sankey lose everything uh, in the, uh, the Great Chicago Fire. So the, uh, Mrs. O'Leary's cow uh, caused the Great uh, Chicago Fire and destroyed everything, and it destroyed all the uh, possessions. 1872, Moody and Sankey traveled to England. And uh, Sankey's hymns are promoted by Baptist preacher Charles Spurgeon. Um, in, in my uh, new next next course, which will be the greatest in English influences on Protestants, and Charles Spurgeon would also be a member of that. Also, uh, between 1875 and 1891, he uh, publishes the Gospel Hymn series, which we actually already talked about. The original one was from Phil, uh, co-written with Philip Bliss, uh, and uh, Philip Bliss died in that tragic. Uh, train accident when he tried to go back and rescue his wife. And they continued uh, publishing this for a number of years, as you can see. But the big one, and the reason that he's really on our list, is in the 1890s he uh, published Sacred Songs and Solos, which contains 750 hymns and gospel songs. And that's a whole lot. That's a lot of songs. And it kind of became the standard for the last part of the 19th century. If the sacred harp was the standard for the beginning, uh, this was kind of the standard for the second half. And then people tend to call it the, the Moody Sankey uh, uh, book. By 1903, it had expanded to 1,200 hymns and gospel songs. So it really was the standard by that point. Dies in 1908 in Brooklyn. Uh, he doesn't know it, but in 1979, he was elected to the <laughs> The Gospel Music Association, Gospel Music Hall. <laughs> Posthumacy, absolutely. So he was a Methodist composer. He was a gospel music publisher. And uh, an associate of Dwight Moody, Philip Bliss. And also he was uh, friends with Fanny Crosby. And we, we haven't done Fanny Crosby yet, but some of you, uh, including uh, Elder Sheffield, noted that our final hymn today was indeed written by none other, none other than Fanny Crosby. And I think another song, at least that was close to one of the ones we did today, was a Philip Bliss song. Or at least I saw his name on the page, which I thought was cool. Uh, he actually, especially when they went to England, and the Moody and Sankey went to England, he really pushed Fanny Crosby's hands. And uh, that was one of the things that started to make her famous. Uh, I just thought this was a wonderful, Caricature of it from Vanity Fair in 1875. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, I could have printed a boring black and white picture, but I thought that was so cool. This is a caricature. Pardon? Should the caricature. I said emphasis on the word caricature. Yeah. He looks like almost kind of like you, but. So do you think it's really really good looking? No, I started to say not as good looking as you. Oh, oh, Let me get it in there. You tell me what it's like. 1870, he becomes a Dwight Moody song leader, uh, uh, not unlike the relationship that existed between Billy Graham and well, uh, uh, Shea, Shea, George, George, George Beverly Shea, Shea. Shea. Uh, very similar, but a uh, uh, you know, seven years so earlier. Out of his work with Moody comes Sam Key's most famous work, Sacred Songs and Solos, which by 1903 contains 1,200 songs. 
He also collaborated with Philip Bliss to publish a series of gospel hymns books. Because of these publishing efforts, Santee has become almost synonymous with gospel music. So he's in here not so much because he was Dwight uh, Moody's song leader, but rather because he, he was involved in these two great uh, publishing efforts. Because you've got to remember, back then, there's no internet, there's no Facebook, there's no YouTube. Uh, you can't record a song and post it on Facebook uh, tomorrow. Uh, there's no record players, there's no CD players. The only way to transmit music from one town to another or from one person to another is by writing the music. And, and that's, what, that's why these guys were so important. 